I guess... Wall? What are these moves? What are these moves? What? Zombie? Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> that stage actually looks kind of cool. That's a dope stage. Oh, that is so cool. Yo. Yo. Well, there it is. Holy shit. Like, I did browse over on this. It says Minecraft reveal trailer, so I kind of had an idea, but like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, that's the that's the next uh, end boss, dude. Fuck, fuck the dragon. Nah, you gotta fight Master Hand, bro. You gotta fight fucking Master Hand. Let's look one more time at these movesets. Or at least like what they showed. These look so fucking cool. Let's watch this one more again. Bah! Get out of here. Okay, so that one's like that that pale down's like Isabella's down smash with the water bucket, but instead it's like lava. What do we got there? Lol. <laughs> See, he just did like a fishing rod like Isabel, but then like yeeted this dude. And then you, I, you can just build. I wonder if that only works on like flat surfaces or if that's like how you're going to recover off stage. You know what I mean? Dude, you could literally just get like a whole... A whole, like, slew of just Minecraft characters and just build a house and smash, dude. Yeah, I agree. That fishing is probably the grab. And that, that up throw is probably that, uh, the spring. I wonder if the, the box will have, like, random... Either it's random or, like, selected what you're crafting. Because, like, you know how he had the, uh, the pickaxe at one point? So I wonder if that is going to be, um, like, maybe like a smash or a special of some sort. It looks like an up tilt. <laughs> that's that going to be the down, uh, is that going to be the spike dude? Just drop a fucking hammer on the, or an anvil on their head, dude? Just bah! <laughs> Get that chicken. Dude, like... Whatever that is, that looks cool. That looks really cool. Or maybe that's the up. Uh, up B was when they get those wings, dude. Holy crap. Alright, well this looks fucking exciting. This looks... Yeah. This is actually really freaking cool. I am uber pumped to try this guy out. He, Steve looks... <laughs> fantastic i'm super happy about him being added in here i think think a lot of people are going to be okay with this uh there were a bunch of other names being thrown around um you know that people wanted like sora or uh like dante from devils may cry or you know master chief <laughs> if you want to go down that route but uh man that looks exciting that looks really exciting and i'm here for it I'm here for it. Yeah, definitely going to be giving that character a try here. That is just too cool. On other uh, new release news, uh, tomorrow we are getting two new games coming out here. We have the new Crash Bandicoot from Activision, uh, Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time is the name of the title. 
uh, uh, launches tomorrow, October 2nd, and aims to pick up where the golden age of the orange marsupial left off, with developer Toys for Bob gleefully approaching it with tongue-in-cheek humor and intentionally, um, or intentionality that looks to expand on the series' enjoyable, chaotic platforming mechanics. Everyone's a big fan of uh, platforming games. I think this is a nice little... Um, a nice little marketing strategy too to go along with um, Nintendo's release of their Mario package and all the new platformers and stuff that are there. So I think bringing it to uh, a couple other places, and it's also a very, very well-known series. So I hope it goes well. Personally, I've never really played too much past like uh, original, but hey, man, it's got to be there for someone. Now, something that a little that is a little bit more my speed, also coming out tomorrow is Star Wars Squadrons. Um, I did a news review on Star Wars Squadrons about a week ago, and uh, if you want to see more information about that, please go check out that video. It's on YouTube. It's on this Twitch channel. So if you want to see more information, um, definitely I would recommend looking at it. It does not seem to be just a simple flight, you know, dogfight simulator. There's definitely a lot more going on um, inside the mechanics of that game. Uh, than meets the eye. Apparently, after watching a lot of game reviews and, uh, like, you know, experienced players try to tackle the systems, there's definitely a steep learning curve and there's a lot to micromanage, but that makes it more exciting to me. I, I like the complexity when it comes to something as straightforward as, like, a flying game, right? Because it just adds more depth. Uh, the amount of customization you can do is insane. So... This is definitely going to be something I keep an eye on. And I see right now as well, it's only $40 on Steam. It's not going to be a big $60 release. Um, it's going to be $40, which is actually really nice. Personally, I've been uh, disappointed by a lot of the pre-orders that I've done uh, over the past year here. And I really want to wait until I can see some first-hand reviews coming out of launch to for me to personally buy it. However, that being said, I'm highly expecting it to be good, and I really hope that it shapes up to be the amazing game that it says it's going to be. Now, on to the spice of today. As spicy as Steve was, I'm going to hit you with one more here. So, <clears throat> as I've been looking into Tencent, a Chinese uh, development company, I've been learning some things. I've been learning some things. So what originally got me on the track of Tencent was uh, them purchasing Warframe. I am a huge player of Warframe. I've sunk way too many hours in that game that I care to admit. It's all about the fashion frame. But being bought by them, I was then interested in the company of Tencent. And originally when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a major big company that's taking over Warframe. Maybe... Just maybe they'll be getting it, you know, to to breathe a little more life into Warframe. Because I'm not going to lie, my enjoyment and just the the way that DE has been presenting the story in uh, super elongated segments for only a small bit of story kind of petered my interest as it's going along. Because it's hard to just keep grinding over and over again like that and really keep the interest. So and initially, I was excited. Then I started looking into Tencent. And what got me back into looking at them was Black Myth Wukong. So let me, before I go into that, let me back up and tell you, tell you guys some stuff about Tencent. Tencent is a huge company. Here's an idea of what they own um, around the world here. Riot Games. 84% stake in Supercell, which is Clash of Clans. 80% in New Zealand's grinding gear game, so like Path of Exile. 40% of Epic Games. A couple other ones like Glue Mobile, uh, Blue Hole, and then 5% in Activision. They have their hands everywhere across the world in a bunch of major companies and corporations. Okay, now that that's set how big they are. A couple of years ago, they wanted Riot to release a mobile game basically a MOBA mobile league mobile right and they said that no we don't want to do that we we want like 
for Riot, that vision did not fit what they wanted to do. Like, mobile was not going to work with what they wanted to do with League of Legends. And so what Tencent did is they basically copy and pasted League of Legends in their own mobile format and sold it as their own and made money off it and profited. Now, Riot Games initially was upset that they basically took their intellectual property, but that got settled and the game still stands. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to go against the people that own you, especially when they have all the money that they can think of. So another thing besides shady business practices of ripping off their own developers to get their own foothold in what they think is profitable for themselves. That being said, mobile games in China are extremely popular, extremely popular. So they definitely wanted to bring that to that market. However, in ripping off someone else's work is fucked regardless of who you are. So they not only do mobile games, they also do applications. They have one of the biggest chat apps in China called WeChat. What well, WeChat has been accused, but I don't want to say accused because it was proven true. So during the pandemic outbreak, when all of this COVID-19 stuff started happening, WeChat censored its messages so no one could talk about the pandemic, the area that I was from, anyone infected. It would immediately block your message and not let you send it to anyone. You could not get word out about the pandemic. This also extends to anti-political talk. You cannot say anything about the government. It is censored, taken down, and I can only dread to see the repercussions of you being caught to that extent. Another shady thing that they have done is outside of their mobile game, they tried to make, or trying, I believe, to make a game about Chinese history. However, they are working closely with the government, the Communist Party of China, to make this game. In this game, there has been reported propaganda a false presentation of the facts of what the history actually was. And it's lying to the people in an effort to rally under the communist banner. That's a couple of the things that Tencent has done. Okay. <clears throat> Super shady. Not okay. Not okay. Now, oh, quick little side thing. I just got a notification that my first Twitch emote has been approved. It's only been a week and a half. Oh, it may take a couple hours. For, we're almost there, folks. We're almost there for the emotes. For everyone subscribed, we're almost there. You can start spamming them very, very soon. All right, so Black Myth Wukong. Uh, let me look up the studio name. I apologize for not having this up earlier. I try to commit to memory, but I am dumb. All right. <clears throat> so the studio Game Science originally was partnered and in inside of Tencent. So actually... Before it was a thing, the uh, developers and uh, president was inside of Tencent. They left because they didn't want to make mobile games. They wanted to make games they liked. Any idea they had about this style of game was shot down, right? So in an interest of developer freedom and creativity, they broke off and made a 13-person indie studio. 13 people! We're working on Black Myth Wukong, and they have named their uh, their game studio Game Science. 
And if this goes live, it is going to be China's first AAA title. That is massive. That is huge. They not only get a boost away from Tencent, but they actually get something that's not a mobile game that not only people in China, but the entire world would be excited to see. The entire world. I have seen gameplay of it. I'm actually going to put it up here in the background uh, while I continue to talk about it. Because it, it's so it's so good. It just, it just looks so pretty. And let's put this here. Alright, so... They wanted to break away, like I said, to get that creative freedom. And their studio has grown uh, from other people leaving from Tencent from other developers i think they're up to about 40 now and they have made this beautiful beautiful game i'm gonna skip forward to one of the boss fights and i want everyone to kind of pay attention to the detail let me see if i can get there okay so first of all the shadings the textures look incredible they look so good and I know earlier, he had fought another boss and got, like, his fire powers, right? And later in this fight, he's going to have a transformation into that boss enemy. Look at those, just look at the sparks, the flares, everything looks really nice. And what blew my mind is when I read a report from Game Science Studios, they were like, yes, we appreciate, you know, the hype, everything around it. But they were disappointed. They said, sorry. We are sorry. We see this problem, this problem, this problem. The frame rates dropped during this part. They were apologizing for this gameplay footage because they saw what we can't see. And we're like, oh my god, it's amazing. But they're like, no, we see all the problems. All of them. That is humbling to hear. That is so humbling. Instead of, you know, patting themselves on the back, they're like, no, we need to go back to the fucking drawing board and knock this shit out. We need to knock this out. That is just, mm, that's a great work ethic towards a game, and I'm super happy to see it, because just, ugh, this game looks incredible. And this is one of those legends that really goes back to, like, I can't think of a single person that, you know, I mean, there, there probably is a couple, but everyone knows about Sun Wukong, right? Whether it be through different mediums of, you know, like, different tellings of the legend, like Goku, for example, or other base characters. You still know the legend in some capacity. This right here I love. His fur gets set on fire when you hit him with the fire. Like, you don't, you don't really see that in other games. Like, you know, you hit him with fire, like, oh, like, it maybe do, like, a splash animation, but, like, actually impacting the fur is incredible. I think that's a very, very nice attention to detail. And then I believe at 1.2, he shakes it off. He just rubs it off, and, yeah, just like that, there it is. There it is. So, I really hope this game gets the traction and support that it needs. This can be... An incredible groundbreaking game for not just game science but the entire Chinese game market if more studios see this happen and independent developers who have great ideas get away from the mega <laughs> the mega structure that is Tencent get away from the mobile games make what you want to make and then we can get things like this more triple a massive titles coming out of wonderful Chinese developers. I hope it goes well. I hope it goes well. Because this could definitely mark something new for uh, for our good old games. If we can get more things like this, literally just anything, more independence out of there, I think we'll be moving in the right direction. So uh, everyone... Oh, thank you so much for stopping by. We saw some cool stuff today. Minecraft in Smash. We here for it. Definitely going to be playing that a little bit later today. Ooh. Oh, quick little side note. I know um, uh, on, what's today, Thursday? On Monday, I talked about um, 
the Epic the Apple case, a quick little update. They've actually made a coalition now. It's not just Epic. There's about 10 other app developers, uh, some of the most notable being Spotify and Tinder. They are joining Epic Games in their fight against Apple. Um, same, same case where... Apple is not allowing competitive pricing on their own app store, thus making it a monopoly. And that is how they're going to court, and they are getting more backing as this is going. So I'll definitely be keeping you guys updated. Um, but the next court case is going to be in like July of next year, so I'll keep you guys informed as I find out about it. But uh, everyone, thank you so much for stopping by today. I'll be streaming No Man's Sky later today. Um, so definitely stop by and check that out. Uh, just drifting through space together, having a relaxing, cool time. It's a nice little change of pace from, you know, me screaming at Dark Souls for a couple hours. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much.